Right, demand for pure medical cannabis is at an all-time high. In fact, the global market for the plant is expected to grow by about 22% per year to reach about 66 billion US dollars by 2030. To help meet this demand, Lesotho-based cultivator and manufacturer plans to triple its production this year. The company is only one of a handful worldwide compliant with European Union standards for medical cannabis, allowing it to export the region and select other markets. Now, let's find out more from MG Health's Head of Business Development, Luke van der Nest. Uh, Luke, I imagine the expansion has allowed you in some way to, you know, empower the community where you are, where you have these plants. Yes, it has, massively so. Um, I think the nice thing about being set up where we are, which is in a very remote area of, of Lesotho, deep in, in the Maluti Mountains, um, in what we like to call a pristine environment, is that when you build a business or an operation of this size from scratch, that you're able to build in structurally into the business manners of affecting the community and impacting the community in, in a positive way um, and build it into the structure of the business so that it outlasts the current management team and future management teams and, and really creates an intergenerational opportunity for community and the team that, that actually works as a part of MG Health. And when we talk about medical cannabis, the demand for it, Luke, are you finding a lot of clients within the country, within the territory where you're operating, or are a lot of your, uh, call them patients, from elsewhere? So it's, it's, been, it's been hard fought. I think there's a lot of demand for medicinal cannabis and, and growing because it's, it really can change a lot of people's lives for certain indications. Where the real struggle is, is complying with the very strict pharmaceutical standards to get into the largest markets such as Germany, Australia and Israel, um, which are the largest markets because they've got fantastic programs and prescription pathways where medical patients or patients that require medical cannabis as a treatment are very easily able to get their products. So the, the difficulty really was getting into these markets and, and producing a product that is compliant with, with the strict pharmaceutical requirements, which is something we achieved in, in 2021. We, we began exporting into, into Germany. And um, since then, we have seen significant growth in demand, um, which is what drove us to having to triple our capacity and embark on an expansion program. Uh, something is very important because people that are on medical cannabis, it's a very important medication for them. And that once you've been prescribed it, you cannot have any discontinuation in supply. And um, so for us growing in demand to, to be able to serve the patients that we're currently helping was very, very important for us to, to trigger this growth. Let's talk about the benefits of medical cannabis, uh, Luke. I mean, what are they? What feedback are you getting from other medical professionals globally uh, who have procured your product and uh, essentially from the patients uh, themselves who have used it? So I think there's a lot of science to go into it, and, and I'm probably the wrong person to do that. But effectively, medicinal cannabis supports a system in your body called the endocannabinoid system. Um, and a, a defunct endocannabinoid system leads to a lot of indications or a lot of issues within the body. The key indications that we're seeing it prescribed for um, in Germany particularly is largely for pain, um, and it's a fantastic replacement for opioid-based pain therapy. And we've seen unbelievable results with patients that suffer from seizures and epilepsy-related diseases uh, in being able to manage and treat those symptoms. And look, when we talk about the process and what goes into uh, the product that you are exporting globally, uh, when you talk to me about non-irradiated product, what does that mean exactly? Sure. So medicinal cannabis, one of the things that's, that's great about it is, is the high safety profile of medicinal cannabis because it's tested for a wide variety of things, such as heavy metals and pesticides, but also what's called the microbial load, so, which is effectively a fancy word for mold and, and mold growth within the product. And uh, a lot of the patients that use medicinal cannabis are immunocompromised. So any mold or, or microbial uh, bacteria could really affect them quite negatively and, and could actually could kill them. So there's a limit for how much microbials you can have in a product. Um, and generally it's very, very hard to maintain or be below those levels. So 
a large majority of, of medical cannabis producers put the flower through a process called irradiation, which is effectively high-powered microwave beams uh, to kill all the microbials within the product. But it also kills a lot of the quality aspects of the profile and product and decreases the overall quality profile. And we believe the, the efficacy surrounding that. Now, where we are in Lesotho, uh, about 2,000 meters above sea level in a very, very pure environment, we have a very low risk of contaminants and the altitude itself allows us to control the microbial load significantly. So we are able to, to just distribute a product that is sufficiently clean that we don't have to put it through any additional gamma wave or, or radiation processes. Um, and we can deliver it directly to pharmacies for patients without that. And in effect, it creates a pure product. And I think we're in a world where, where people want to know where their products come from and, and that it's clean and that it's as pure as possible. And being where we are in the mountains of Lesotho is, is really what's been allowed, has allowed us to to control that and, and consistently deliver a product that is that is clean and pure. And the efficiency of the business, um, Luke, I imagine is at an all-time high at the moment because you're operating in a country where you've got access to clean water, um, you're not affected by load shedding um, and things like that. How has that helped your business in terms of operations? It's, it's been a massive help. I must say Lesotho has been a fantastic home for the business. Um, as you say, there's power security. Where we set up is just below the Mahali Dam, which is actually one of the dams as part of the Highlands Development Scheme and, and feeds clean drinking water into the Vaal Dam for Johannesburg. So being just downstream from that gives us access to endless amounts, really, of crystal clean, pure water. Um, we've got the pure air from our environment. So it's allowed us to, to really scale scale up and scale into an operating environment that we know is going to sustain the business to grow for for the long term um, and in terms of the regulations in Lesotho they've, they've been fantastic in, in allowing us to and the businesses in Lesotho to take this industry on on a global scale um, and it's obviously a fantastic time in Lesotho with with the new government and, and the political stability that we have it's 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 an exciting new dawn for the country and, and we really just hope that medical cannabis can play a big part in that and before I let you go, Luke, is your product available in South Africa? Uh, where? Unfortunately, it's not available in South Africa. Um, we, the, the medical regulations in South Africa to be able to be prescribed medicinal cannabis are very, very clunky, for lack of a better word. Um, and the doctors and patients have to go through a massive amount of work and paperwork. Um, and it, even then, it is quite, quite limited. So. We're really hopeful that the regulations in South Africa, specifically for patients that want to be prescribed the product and monitored by their doctor, can ease up and we can enter this market. But at the moment, we, we mainly focused on markets where there's sufficient scale and the regulatory pathway for patients to be prescribed and monitored is, is active and, and is large enough to really um, sustain a, a business such as, as Germany. And that is a global market. Luke, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Look for that. Next is the head of business development at MG Health.